Hello, 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 share a lot of things related to my personal life experience in Harab and also making some cooking video. Yeah, guys, today is going to be like a storytelling. It's, it's just my first experience traveling abroad, leaving my own country, Nigeria. Yeah, it's just a short story about my experience, what I've seen concerning uh, our Nigeria International Muritala Muhammad in Lagos and uh, the feelings that I had when I was leaving Nigeria back then. Yeah, because you know, when you are traveling out of the country, even interstate traveling, when you are just leaving your own comfort zone, leaving your family member, you are going to another state, just have a fun time or to work or just be on your own, be independent. There is this feeling of happiness within the, the innermost heart, but in my own case, so this is quite different. I don't know, maybe you guys have, have something similar to me, but the first time I will be leaving Nigeria, it's a missed feeling for me. Like, seriously, it's a missed feeling. And uh, I could remember the first time I'm leaving my own state, where I'm living, where I was brought up to just another state, that happy moment, yes, I couldn't even sleep at night that year, I'll be traveling, that, that, that was Ibado, yeah, from another state to Ibado, it was my first time, so I couldn't even sleep, I, I was just telling myself, oh, I wish it's already tomorrow, back then, but you won't even imagine international flight, first time, leaving my own country, it wasn't even making me feel like, I'm not even happy. I can't even tell. But but the 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 reason I could even remember is because maybe maybe it's because I was sick because I was just getting recovered from illness and uh, my date of traveling to Homa right now it's already in a week time. Even my mom told me that if you don't want to go, just cancel this flight or just say you are not going to this Arab because like your mind is not even there. You don't even be like someone who wants to go there. So I, I don't have that uh, good feeling coming over to Arab. I can't lie to you. It's not that I've had anything online or someone told me that the place you are going is not that good or that. But right from the beginning, the day that my agent introduced coming to Oman to me and the day I started processing the day I even uh, collected my documents, day, uh, my ticket day that I'll be leaving Nigeria. See, I was just calm, eager, eager and also anxious. In another uh, aspect, yeah, I was eager. Yeah, when I was processing, I was a little bit eager and curious that where is Oman and all that. And I did a little research about this country. And uh, after that, I speak with some people when I said Uma Uma, people will be like, what country, what, country, what country is that Uma Uma? A lot of people do tell me that they haven't heard about the country, but where I'm going is getting to international, international airport in Muritala Mohammed in Lagos, and uh, when the agent is trying to get my uh, ticket confirm and everything, every document that I have with me to tender it to them because my agent back then was in Ondo State, but he has a one immigration officer at the airport that okay, it's gonna help me out, but don't let me lie to you guys. This is the most annoying part about all this our airport officers, workers, and all that. They are too fond of bribing, everything is like. Do no man now, set to us now, do this. You know, see, these days I've been going through internet and I was seeing uh, people complaining how they were being molested or harassed or in the name of getting bribed out of travelers, like settlement unnecessary things. I, and 
this thing when i go to omar i don't even have anything related to all this like said to me all that so it's a, it's a little bit annoying and i saw a lot of white people coming to our country say all these things online and uh, it's really annoying because i could remember back then when when i got to the office uh, those immigration table they told me oh, why are you going to omar omar is this omar is that they were even saying so many bad things concerning omar and me because i told you guys that i don't even have this good feeling coming over and when i had all those things they were saying i was a little bit withdraw then i start feeling uncomfortable to where i'm going let me tell you the truth i was uncomfortable so when they told me i said there's nothing i can do they even t told me that if i could settle them they would change my flight to another country that is way better to Omar. and i'm like i i knew nobody the country you are you are recommended to me and my agent already processed everything and hiring those people is going to pick me so why are you telling me that if i could say to you guys you are going to make another country for me immediately and i will leave so if i get there what am i going to do there for you guys you are not giving me that but you are just about to get something out of me and you are trying to confuse me so and i told them that oh thank you so much so since i have been handed over to someone like the the immigration officer my agent i don't make over to so i told them that oh it's my brother that thank you so much my brother is taking uh everything that is necessary so you'll be the one to do that that don't get me involved in all these things you are saying okay they say oh so is your brother do you know him you know all these curiosity questions they are just asking me at the airport at the end of everything uh my <laughs> my my immigration officer up there just undo my ticket to me and told me just heading straight don't mind these people and all that and after the man just said i should go to my zone and i was all alone because my flight will be in another one hour then but i've been at the airport around the what yeah i'll be leaving nigeria around 2 p.m and i was already at the airport 1 p.m yeah so sitting doing this and i was just walking up and down using the restroom and all that and uh finally when i stepped my foot into the airplane i was like wow so this is what it is and i look at so many uh flight attendants the way they dress uh, okay i see like normal you know when you are you are everything that I, I saw at the first entrance is just the okay to me that it's normal there's nothing that special so as uh, nigeria airport and when i get there it was when we're about to leave when we are going to board and i we are being told that fasting your seat belts do this and all that it was then i now see that okay this one is a little bit different for entering a car or you are inside a bus so okay and uh, at a particular time they were now serving us food like what's this when i opened it i could remember something which is the red kidney beans oh, they serve us white rice and uh with red kidney beans but it's a little bit different from just a white uh, beans and rice they just prepare like should i say like concussion or fried rice, right? something like that. Sha. I could just remember that beast. So when they serve me, I I don't even feel good because of what those uh, people trying to discourage me living to Arab. So I don't feel so good. Even I, I lost my appetite when they served me. I couldn't finish that food. You know that all these they are they are serving um, aluminium. Because they use aluminum plates to serve us, disposable one. So I, I can't even finish it. And it's a small portion of food. I just have little and uh, <laughs> I was served some milk. Yeah, because I, I said I demanded for milk and uh, um, more sugar. No, no, I don't. They gave me sugar, but I don't use it. So I have some tea and uh, milk and they sent me yeah they sent me uh, biscuits and the only funny thing that i know i could remember i did is that uh, when we were about to i lighted i said my money not go waste too so i picked that biscuit even though i don't eat it i pick it 
<laughs> and I threw it inside my bag. And uh, inside the plane, I met a lot of Nigerians that were also coming to Arab. Some of them were coming to Oman. And I was lucky to have a girl sitting close by when I have a stopover and we have a new uh, flight. Yeah, just a mini flight from, is that not Kenya or I don't even remember that country again. From there, is it Cairo? It's like from Cairo to Oman. I couldn't even remember. Okay, yeah, something like that. Maybe it's just one Africa country to Oman. We have a stopover. And uh, during my stopover, it's just like 30 minutes. And before I could even say I, I could get to relax, my, 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 my plane is here. And it was a rushing hour for me. I couldn't even make any picture or anything like that. And I even find it difficult to get the way to the final terminal to get bus that took me to get my airplane. Why? It's because most of the people I was speaking with, they don't understand English. That is the first thing that I experienced like at another Africa country airport and you couldn't even see people who can understand English so easy. So I find it a little bit weird that what? How could these people like i i met a lot of people like five to six people before i come across one nigeria that could understand me it was that person that oh we are in the same thing okay this is my second time traveling abroad travel to Arab country that so let's move together it was a guy so when we walk along together he was just directing me and thank god i met that guy because i almost missed the uh bus terminal that would drop me to the last uh uh plane that would took me to oman and by the time it was the, it was a marathon like and i have a luggage with me see it wasn't funny and that guy was just like running come now come now. <laughs> and it was just a hippo guy it was just speaking this guy boutic dialect <laughs> see my mind was not there because i'm not even happy with about where i'm going and the fact that I knew the kind of job I'm coming to do, it's not what I'm willing to do. So it's all like, run now, nah, see, this thing gonna leave you. And uh, at last, so we bought the plane from that country to Oman. And I met this funny girl sitting close by. Yes, she was sitting behind me and she was just pointing to me, talking, and uh, we're having a chit chat like normal. Nigeria, we don't even know ourselves because I was too double. She was so free, that kind of person. She even had a lot of plans. She came with a different certificate and all that. That when she made it a little bit in Oman, that she's going to cross to another country to continue her education. And I told her that I don't even have something like that in mind. And she, she was that kind of, that is that the kind of person you had that you are kind of silent that. She was just trying to get me out of that mood I was that this so eventually we get to Oman and uh, the lady that I said she was trying to share me up and our boss arrived and we departed. The only thing I regret not doing is that asking her to give me a number that I can contact her because she was just like a friend and a sister that really helped me a lot because I'm not in good mood ever since I had what those guys at the airport, Nigeria airport told me I'm not in good mood all, all true but that lady helped me to share up but we departed guys this is my story about first time leaving my country Nigeria to Oman so what is your own experience about first time boarding a flight traveling out of the country because i could remember when i was living on those state to lagos i couldn't even control my tears which is the first time my mom my mother just says ah you are a colors girl oh you don't do like a song is going to miss us that's what my mom said whenever I want to travel from one state to another. But this time around, I can't even look straight into my mom's face. When she was praying to me, for me, I was just saying amen, but I can't face her. And uh, my mommy also, she had this feeling that just told me that I should go with my junior brother. And when my junior brother was seeing me off to the park, we are just chilling, talking, but it's normal. But when my brother said 
says goodbye and i was left alone he turned his back to me and i just entered the bus the first thing that comes from my eyes just like weeping looking at my brother going that was my first experience crying like departing from my parents departing from my family i cried the person sitting next to me was asking that sister what is going on what happened to you i can't talk i'll just do like this so i just like one hour inside that bus i couldn't raise up my face huh because it was so red that swollen i couldn't control my emotion like i was like yeah question it has never happened to me like crying i can't control it too. like that was my first experience so what is yours about traveling for the first time abroad i'd like to read that at the comment section and thank you so much for watching to this present moment see you in my next upload bye and much love